On the top of our list is the rationalization of capital gains tax rate. At present, the holding period for long-term capital gains varies across asset classes. We have a different holding period for listed securities other than units, different holding periods for units in REITs and INVITs, and unlisted shares. There's also disparity in the tax rate that applies to Indian tax residents and non-residents with respect to unlisted shares and securities, and also lack of clarity on, around how non-residents should be taxed on the sale of listed securities in off-market trades. Indeed, what is the need of the R is that the government relooks the capital gains tax regime such that it's simplified and the impact or the distortionary impact it has across investments and across asset classes is reassessed. Second on our list is taxation of Indian depository receipts. As Indian capital markets pick up steam, foreign companies are looking to list their shares on Indian stock exchanges through Indian deposit receipts. However, they're often dissuaded by the lack of clarity around taxation of IDRs and the disparity in the tax treatment between listed equity shares and IDRs, which make IDRs less tax competitive. As the government is looking to build world-class stock exchanges in India, a clear tax policy around IDRs is necessarily warranted. The third recommendation is a no-brainer. Uh, this is an industry demand across the board, which is essentially the revival of the 15% concessional corporate tax rate for manufacturing companies. As India competes for foreign investments in the manufacturing sector against an evolving geopolitical background, an extension of the 15% concessional tax rate, which is consistent with global minimum tax norms, should enhance India's tax competitiveness alongside other policy measures such as you know, keep working on ease of doing business in India, as well as implementing new PLI schemes. The next uh, tax proposal that I'd like to really talk about is angel tax. Now, as we're all aware, last year, the government extended angel tax provisions to share subscriptions by non-residents. This continues to impact genuine FDI inflows into India as well as genuine deal structures, right, where price differential is commercially negotiated between the parties. While the government has attempted to address this by way of a fraud-based valuation methodology mechanism and exempting select investors and startup, this still remains a pain point in most arms length deals. Government should relook the efficacy of angel tax that does not really tie in with tax principles and is mostly a tool to check unaccounted money. The next um, uh, proposal that the government can think about, of course, and I, again, this is a, 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 this is something that is expected, is the Pillar 2 draft rules and guidelines. Pillar 2 essentially implements in global mat, you know, in simple terms, across jurisdictions for companies with turnover exceeding Euro 750 million. While most countries have released or enacted Pillar 2 rules, India has yet to announce these. Most large multinational companies would like to see India's rules around India's qualified domestic minimum top-up top tax and how that really ties in with gift city tax incentives. 